Welcome back to HQ. Fresh off a national title in the 2024 Most Outstanding Player has her side set on the WNBA draft. Former South Carolina star big Camila Cardoso saw her draft stock jump after leading the Gamecocks to victory over Caitlin Clark in Iowa. But make no mistake, Caitlin will headline this class. She's expected to go number one overall to the Indiana Fever, linking up with Aaliyah Boston. The 2024 draft less than one week away with round one set for April 15th in New York City. For more on all the action, let's bring in our CBS Sports College basketball reporter, Erica Ayala. Erica, we have seen the Caitlin Clark effect at the collegiate level, but now, even before she's played a second of professional basketball, and WNBA teams are already preparing for her impact at the professional level. The Mercury already teasing the battle between the GOAT and the Rook. Now, I know Deanna Taurasi sort of gave a warning to Caitlin and the rest of the rookies to be ready for that next level, but at this point, Erica, I kind of feel like the WNBA should get ready for Caitlin Clark. Just what do you make of these preseason preparations that teams are already making? Well, I'll start with Erica Wheeler, actually. She is a guard for the Indiana Fever. And she said once the Fever locked in that number one pick, she already had people who, let's just say not all of them, had been reaching out for tickets in the in, prior to and now want tickets to see the Fever and Caitlin Clark. I think also the rookies versus uh, veterans, this has been something we've seen in the WNBA for a while. And one of the things I loved while covering the final four was seeing some of the WNBA players talk about their quote unquote welcome to the WNBA moment. It's always really interesting to hear players talk about the first time that they had lockdown defense from a Swin Cash, a Tina Thompson, or even Asia Wilson putting on a block against her former South Carolina teammates. So yes, there is some of this that is just part of the conversation always. But yes, there is a special effect with Caitlin Clark. We also know that the Vegas Aces, who've already sold out their season tickets, they moved once again to T-Mobile Arena. It, of course, will be when they play Indiana. But um, we see these accommodations being made, and I think... Those on the women's basketball side have been waiting for undeniable proof that women's basketball can go into larger markets, into larger arenas. We talk about the NCAA Final Four. The tickets on the secondary market were higher. It was a higher cost on the women's side, but there were also fewer seats in the arenas for the Final Four. So. I think some of this is really just adjusting to the market. And I would argue that women's basketball fans and even those in women's basketball are thanking Caitlin Clark, much like Don Staley did, for making a case that is undeniable that women's basketball deserves to be on higher platforms. 18.7 million viewers for that championship game, Erica. So hopefully we will see that translate over to the WNBA season. Now, Phoenix does not have a first round pick, but LA does. They will pick at two and four. Our CBS Sports Mock draft shows the Sparks taking Cameron Brink and Rakia Jackson. Do you like the fit there for those two ladies and how much of an early impact do you expect to see that duo making? I think they they have a chance to really impact this Sparks team. We know that they lost Neka Gumake in free agency to the Seattle Storm. She has been such a long stay with that program. And so there is some not only room for star power, but room in the post. The, uh, the uh, LA Sparks have struggled to have that dominant post play that we know when they were taking on the Minnesota Lynx in those back and forth championships in the WNBA and so Cameron Brink we know can clean up on the boards Rikia Jackson as well and I think she brings an energetic spark offensively that the Sparks will really need to compete this year in the WNBA. Yeah they finished the 2023 season 17 and 23 so hopefully you'll see those two ladies give them a big boost. Now I mentioned it off the top Camila Cardoso's efforts in the national championship now have her projected to go third overall to the Chicago Sky. Erica seeing her in person blew my mind at just the sheer size, the way she was able to dominate in the paint. Uh, to put it bluntly, she is just built different. Uh, her <laughs> rebounding, just a big reason why her game has been elevated. How do you see her skill set transferring to the professional level?
I think her skill set will transfer very well. I think with Camilla, what we'll want to continue to see is that confidence that Dawn Staley gave her, particularly in that game against Tennessee in the SEC championship or in the SEC tournament, excuse me, to go to the championship. That we know that in the professional leagues, especially in the WNBA, one through five, you have to be able to shoot perimeter and have a pretty solid mid range. So I think that will be a little bit of a learning curve for Camilla, but I think she has it in her arsenal. She just hasn't had to use it. And then you look at where she's going. She's set to, and projected by our own Jack Maloney, to go to the Chicago Sky. That is a program that has seen also a, an exodus, if you will, not just in this free agency, but also years prior. They lost Candace Parker, who said she was coming home, and then went off to Vegas. <laughs> so I think that they're going to want to anchor their program as well, and they have a new head coach, the one and only legendary Teresa Weatherspoon. We heard Camila Cardozo get so emotional and talking about how impactful Dawn Staley was. I think there's a lot of potential for Camilla and other players to have that same experience wanting to kind of run through a brick wall for a, a former player and now head coach like Weatherspoon. Yeah, she had 15.7 rebounds, three blocks in the title game. So uh, you, I'm glad you brought up her mid-range game. I would like to see her sort of push that a little bit at the next level, but man, she is built different, as I said earlier. Uh, now, another big Erica being talked about as an instant impact player, potentially uh, the SEC Player of the Year, Angel Reese. She, of course, declared for the draft following that loss to Iowa in the Elite Eight. She's projected to go seventh overall to the Minnesota Link. Another rebounding machine from Reese. So, what are your expectations for the Bayou Barbie in the WNBA? Yeah, I love this. I think Angel, we know, is going to have an immediate impact when it comes to some of the things that happen with eyes on the WNBA. But you can see she's comfortable dribbling. She is a force down low, and she can really get the offense going in transition. She's done that for LSU. Similarly to Cardozo, and I think, again, a lot of the bigs that were really successful in the NCAA, Angel Reese is going to have to work on her mid-range and even uh, perimeter shooting and so that she can draw uh, that defense out and create a little bit more space, not just for herself, but of course for her teammates. I think that's going to be the question mark for Angel Reese. Right now projected to go to the Minnesota Lynx, and of course that is going to be with head coach Cheryl Reeve, who is also the head coach for the Olympic team and the, and the U.S. women's basketball national team. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a different adjustment if she does indeed go to Minnesota, and arguably anywhere she would go. Um, you know, I think that um, Angel Reese, though, is a student of the game. If you speak to her, whether in the locker room or if you hear her on the dais after games, prior to games, she loves to really get into the scout and study her opponent so she is prepared. And that is definitely going to be an asset as she goes into the WNBA. Yeah, she said in that goodbye video that she wants to be one of the greatest to ever play the game of basketball, and that starts with the draft coming up so soon. Let's wrap this up by talking about one of the most decorated programs in women's basketball history, Erica. Of course, I'm talking about the Yukon Huskies. They came up just short against Iowa in the final four, but still projected to have two players taken in the first round. And both Aaliyah Edwards and Nika Mule had such important roles on this Huskies roster. Uh, how does playing for Gino Ariema and playing for such a storied program prepare you for that next level? I think it comes down to discipline and habits. The one thing that we hear from WNBA players, especially those as they're making those tra their transition and the ones that have successfully made the transition and now have veteran status, is that they learned a lot from their veterans in their rookie year. If they were able to play, I think of a Dewana Bonner, who we had a feature on her earlier in the year. She was playing in that Phoenix Mercury system coming from Auburn, and that made a huge difference. And part of that difference is uh, just, again, the discipline. Now, when you have a UConn player, there is already that baked-in discipline that we've seen over time that, that Gino and his coaching staff have built in. So that's what makes them a little bit different. It's not just the discipline, because a lot of programs have that discipline, but it's also the discipline and sticking to that discipline because the formula works. We know that UConn historically has more NCAA championships than any other 
another program on the women's side and actually now they're doing they're doing pretty well on the men's side as well they're getting that tally up so i think that's what makes a yukon player and their transition to the WNBA from a professional level pretty seamless then it's just a matter of how they're going to fit in with the system and the and the overall personnel on their team and on their roster but again there's a pretty selfless culture that comes traditionally with UConn women's basketball and that again is what has made them successful as they move and transition into the professional ranks two picks in this year's first round I imagine another pick in the first round next year with Paige Beckers on deck there uh, UConn, definitely a basketball school. Eric Ayala <laughs> sure. joining us to get ready for the WNBA draft, which is just six days away, by the way, out in New York City. Taking a look at the odds to win the title, no surprise, the Aces top the list looking for number three in a row. You talk about a dynasty, they are certainly building one there. But you also got the runners up and the Liberty checking in there as well. So it is exciting with the WNBA season right around the corner.